Hey guys, it's come for MC here again for our 15th LBP tutorial. This is the third part of a three-part series on Sackbots, and today we are focusing on Sackbot AI. So we're going to try to make a little more intelligent Sackbot enemies, and what I have here is just a basic Sackbot. He doesn't have anything on him right now. We're going to add all that we need. Okay, so to start, I just make a sackbot, I can put him in a costume, can do whatever. Today I made something a little more intimidating and then we look at the default sackbot behavior. I want him to default to patrol. Patrol is a nice uh, random kind of place or way to control the sackbot prior to using him. So he's going to be walking around a basic area. By making him afraid of heights he's not going to fall off this platform and then I'll just make his awareness radius bump that up to 100. Okay, and I dropped his speed down to 50 so he patrols kind of slowly. Okay, so I'm just going to make that the default. I'm going to make a copy of that and make it so when you come within range of the sackbot, I want him to follow. So I want him to follow and chase after you. I'll bump the speed back up to 100. I want him to run at you pretty quick. And then I'll make it so once he gets close enough to you, he's going to stop following. So I'll make it so when he gets within a certain range, then he's going to idle. So I'll just make a copy of this and then change the behavior type to idle. Okay, and then one more copy. If you get too close, I'm going to have him flee. So if you get too close to him, he's going to run away so your characters aren't overlapping, which looks kind of sloppy. Okay, so I've arranged these in descending order of priority. So it's going to start at patrol, and then as you get closer and closer and closer, it's going to move through follow, idle, and flee. Now, the way that we're going to control which of these is active is a selector. A selector is really nice for this because we only want one of these things to be active at once, which is kind of the nature of a selector. Okay, so we have a default four port selector, so that works nicely. Now the way that a selector works, we've already talked quite a bit about how a selector can be overridden with those ports on the left, those override ports. Um, so I'll just wire these up real quick. Now these override ports, they do have a system for priority. So at default, it's going to be at one. And then if you override to another one, it will change to that. Now, what happens when you try to override to two things at once? It'll take priority to the port that's furthest down. Okay, so I'm just going to use a NOT gate to make it default to the first selector port, assuming that there are no other ports activated. And then I'm going to make it so if one of the other ports is activated, it's going to override the default with, its pri with the priority nature of selector. Okay, so I'll just use a player sensor. I'll bump it up to 100, so when you get within a 100 radius, he's going to switch to his follow behavior. And so I just wire that right into the second selector port, which goes through to the follow behavior. Okay, now I'm going to use a second sensor for when you get close enough that he idles. He doesn't follow you anymore. And I'll just bump that to, uh, I'll say 45 and then wire that into the third one. So even though when you're inside that 45 range, you're also inside the 100 range, it takes priority on the lower one. And so it works just how we want we would want. And then for flee, I'll make it so if you're within 25, he's going to flee away from you, which creates a nice effect of kind of pseudo intelligence in the sackbot, which is nice. Okay, so we have the basic movement set up. So now if I r drop into the level, he's going to follow until he gets within this certain range. And then he's going to flee away if you get too close. Now, it's not a very deep system right now. We're just handling the, the movements and the, where the sackbot is going to move to depending on where you are. We can add some things to this, like making him move between layers, making him look at you, and that sorts of things. And to start the basics of that, we're going to use a controlinator. Okay, so I'll just get out a controlinator. We've done a lot of work with controlinators and automating Sackbot movements in our last tutorial. Today we're going to do kind of some similar stuff. Um, I'm going to make it so when he's within that range where he's just idling to you, 
where he's just standing there. I'm going to make it so he looks at you and he's going to move in and out between layers to make it look like he's avoiding. So it's going to look like he's trying to dodge whatever attacks you have towards him, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going to just copy this 45 radius um, player sensor because that's the exact radius that he's going to try to dodge or he's going idle to idle for you with. And then I'm going to use a randomizer and just going to tweak the randomizer settings. The top two are set at default. Minimum on time is zero. Maximum on time is one. And then minimum off time is has to be one. You just want it to turn off for 0.1 seconds each time um, by virtue of how you have to control the player through movements. And then we're going to use a direction combiner. And we wire into the plus and minus port, so it's going to randomize between those. And then we just wire that right into the vertical override for the left stick. Okay, so now if I'm within range, he's going to randomly switch between layers here. He can only switch between the layers that are available to him, so if he's in front of like a thick piece of material, then he's going to just not go back that far. Now if I select all of these behavior chips and change the settings at the bottom to look at, now he's going to look at you when he's doing this. Okay, so if I switch sides or if I drop in and come within range, he's going to look at you. He's going to follow you until he gets within range, and then he's going to start switching between layers so as to dodge attacks and that kind of thing. And I'm just making a copy of that player sensor and turning it on its side, setting the trigger radius to 180. So that right now this is sensing if there is a player to the left, and then I can make another one and do the same thing for if the player is to the right. And again, use a direction combiner and wire the right into the positive, the left into the negative. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this into the right stick. And the right stick, when you're holding R2, is going to control that Sackbot's arms. Okay, so he's going to point his right arm, or I guess it'd be your right, his left arm, towards you. And then I, to make it so you're holding R2 and this happens, I'm just going to wire that from the that 45 radius player sensor into R2. Okay, so now when he gets within range, he's going to point his arm at you. It doesn't look as fluent or as uh, clear when you're on this side because it's his opposite arm. But if I jump over here, you can see that he's clearly pointing that arm at you. So for my wizard level, I had him shooting magic spells or whatever, and the way that I had him point was just by doing exactly this. Okay, so that's the basic idea of getting him to move and getting him to point and look at you. Yeah, and you'll notice there, um, because he's switching from left to right or right to left really quickly, if you try to run in front of him, he actually slaps you. So you can embrace that or you can try to work around it. It's up to you. Okay, so he's not really very imposing right now. He's just running and looking at you and moving around. Um, some of the things that we can do is to give him an ability to shoot something at you. And the way that we do that, you have to be a little careful to make sure that he's shooting in the right direction at all times. So I've set up something ahead of time. I'm not going to build it from scratch. I'm just going to show you how this works. I basically have two pieces of hologram material here. And I'll explain what the parts are. On the first one, it's in the thick layer. I have a couple of gyroscopes to keep it steady, and I have a follower. And this follower is set to follow a green tag. So if I go down to this guy down here and I put a green tag on him, that thick piece that thick piece of hologram is going to follow that green tag. And I bumped the speed and everything all the way up so it's going to follow perfectly with this. So I just set the maximum detection range to 50. It doesn't really matter that much. The speed and acceleration are all the way at 100. Now the reason that I'm using two gyroscopes here is because we're going to be using this as a pivot point for that other piece of hologram and I want to make sure this remains perfectly steady. Okay, so I'm just going to minimize that. And then on this thin piece of hologram I have put a bolt, a zero strength bolt with no visibility in play mode. And then I've put another circuit board on here and it has a look at rotator so this is always going to point in the direction of the player because I put this look at rotator on it. And when the player is within a certain range, I'm going to make it start shooting projectiles at them. So I bumped it up to 80. I realize that's a little far out. 
Um, so I'm going to drop it back down to 70. And then I wire that into a forward backwards timer set to one second and wired to itself. So it's going to reset when it gets to the end. And then that's wired into an emitter set to one shot. And this is emitting whatever projectile you might want. I just have a piece of hologram material with some effects on it. And then I just bolt that right on there to the thick piece of hologram and move it down into range of the sack button. So when I unpause, it's going to follow him. And I got kind of a weird behavior there. That thing is spinning out of control. So I'm just going to grab it. It'll stop its movement and then it'll behave as normal. Okay, so now he is point he is always pointing at where the player is, so his projectiles always shoot in the, the correct direction. And yeah, we've we've basically set up Sackbot AI. He follows you around, he tries to dodge whatever attacks you would send his way, he shoots things at you. Um, you can extend this to however you would like, but the principle of this follow behavior, this priority behavior thing, remains the same. Okay, so I mean, there's not really much more to this. This is exactly how I used it in my wizard level. I did some things a little bit different, but it's this is probably how I would have done it now. Um, yeah, I hope you guys see some potential for this. Uh, it's really simple in nature. You just have to think about how you want it to work for your levels. Um, so yeah, hope you learned something. This is concluding our Sackbot special, our three-part special on that. Hope you guys are seeing a bit more abilities to use Sackbots in your levels, and hope it's been helpful. Take care. See you later. The tutorials will unleash not only exciting tools and objects, but knowledge and the deepest secrets of the cosmos.